Uh, the testimony from the witnesses today has been very uh, illuminating as to the real world impact uh, of these rules and regulations and how uh, the Department of Labor uh, is defying the will of Congress in not properly uh, accounting for the costs of the regulations uh, in the rulemaking process. And when I hear about uh, what uh, has been proposed and what has already been implemented, uh, for me, coming from California, it's like deja vu, because uh, a lot of these very harmful policies uh, already exist in our state. Uh, so that raises the question, how has California fared under this regime uh, of labor law that the Biden administration appears intent uh, on copying? Uh, and the answer is not very well. Uh, California has the second highest unemployment rate uh, of any state, has the lowest level of wage growth of any state, has the highest level of real poverty uh, in the entire country, some of the highest levels uh, of inequality. So uh, I really uh, find it difficult to understand uh, why that is the model uh, for this administration. Another thing that we've learned in California uh, is that you know the text of a statute or a regulation is one thing, uh, but then the identity of its enforcer uh, is another still. So as bad as AB5 was as a matter of policy, it became even more devastating in the hands of a labor secretary who was intent on enforcing it as aggressively and ruthlessly as possible, even exploiting the COVID shutdowns to enforce it even more, put more independent contractors out of work, shut down uh, more small businesses. And of course, I haven't chosen that example at random uh, because right now we have a policy being proposed at the Department of Labor that copies that very law, AB5, and the individual that the Biden administration wants to enforce it is the very same person who is the labor secretary in California, that of course being Julie Su. So uh, Mr. Uh, Wolfson, uh, can you shed a little light on how the identity of the enforcer uh, matters so much in these circumstances and what the ultimate impact of these rules is going to be? That's a great question, Mr. Chairman. I, I think that if you look at an agency that, you know, to Dr. Sojourner's point, there's a number of enforcement agents, and every one of those agents is going to look at a situation slightly differently. And the problem then becomes if you have regulations that are not clear, you have guidance that is making law that is not just providing clarity so that businesses know what they can and cannot do, then each individual enforcement agent is empowered to decide that they do or do not like particular behaviors. And so that's not helpful when you go down to the lowest level of each individual enforcement agent, but it goes all the way up to the top of a department or an agency, because if those people have sufficient flexibility to enforce or not enforce laws that they like or don't like, or enforce it in ways that they do or do not like, then that makes it even harder for businesses to know whether they're in compliance. And as Ms. Melito said, the businesses really just want to know what the rules are. When I was at the Department of Labor, we did not hear you know, various businesses say to us, hey, you know, this rule is impossible to comply with. That wasn't usually the, the concern. It was, we keep getting different stories from different enforcement agents when they walk in. Can you tell us what the standard is? And then we're happy to follow it. Because they don't want to misclassify. They don't want to steal wages from their workers. They just don't necessarily know how to keep track of all the people who are tipped and deciding whether or not it's salad dressing or making the salad. So that uncertainty is a really key point. And so uh, Ms. Uh, Melito, you represent uh, small businesses and uh, can tell us how uh, damaging uncertainty is. Uh, right now, we have a potentially enormous cloud of uncertainty uh, that is going to be cast over all uh, of the rules and regulations coming out of the Department of Labor. As the Biden administration uh, appears intent on keeping acting Secretary Sue in that role, uh, perhaps indefinitely, uh, even as the Senate has not confirmed her and her nomination has been pending uh, for nearly five months. Indeed, her top supporter in the Senate, uh, Senator Bernie Sanders, recently said she should stay in that role whether she has the votes or not. Now, I, uh, you have a number of stakeholders who are watching this uh, and I believe are prepared uh, to challenge rules and regulations uh, that are issued uh, in that situation. So could you tell us a little bit about the effect that would have on small businesses having that cloud of uncertainty? Thank you, um, Chair, for that question. Yeah, DOL seems intent on creating um, more rules under the misguided thinking that more rules are going to make everything better, and that's certainly in the workplaces, and that's certainly not the case. I mean, we've had a lot of conversation today about how the unemployment rate now is under 4%. 
um, and how small businesses are competing for workers. There is no benefit in treating your workers and your employees unfairly and not having a safe workplace. Um, more rules, however, are a wet blanket on innovation and expansion, and they add costs and anxiety in a business. They only make it harder for small businesses to comply with existing local, state, and federal law. So it does seem, unfortunately, that we are going to have California policies transferred here to D.C., and that's very unfortunate for small business owners. Thank you very much. Without objection, I enter into the record letters from the National Restaurant Association and the Flex Association. I would now like to recognize the ranking member of the... Oh, we have actually one more uh, new arrival. Representative Omar, you are recognized for five minutes.